Alright, so just uh, had a couple minutes between cases and I've gotten requests to do videos on certain things. So this one's just a quickie about dissolvers. Um, I think a lot of patients and doctors have a poor understanding of what dissolvers do. And I'm talking about hyaluronic acid dissolvers, hyaluronidase, uh, which is an enzyme that goes and breaks up the linkage of the sugar molecules within hyaluronic acid fillers. And it turns it from a gel into a slimy, slippery bit of water, and then your body reabsorbs it at that point. So uh, dissolvers are used to get rid of fillers. And it's a great thing to have because injectables, as you've probably noticed, are not fully predictable. Uh, you might place them in one little area and it can move or it can uh, draw in water, or it can become superficial, it can do a lot of different things. So it's nice to have the option to reverse them or get rid of them. Uh, the way it works is just with a simple injection, you place it wherever you see the filler and it can disperse and dissolve some of the filler. The issue is it dissolves hyaluronic acid and it's not specific to hyaluronic acid injected as a gel. It can dissolve your own hyaluronic acid. So um, a lot of doctors don't believe that for some reason. They think it would just uh, dissolve the hyaluronic acid gel for some reason, but that's not true. And I know that as a fact because I've seen the results directly during the dissolution and after dissolution of fillers during a surgery. And if you look at different parts of the face, different parts have different amounts of hyaluronic acid content. So uh, if we look at an area like the under eye where there's not much in terms of skin thickness, those areas have less hyaluronic acid because the dermis is thinner, has less hyaluronic, and there's really no smas there. Uh, the SMAS is a very thin layer enveloping the facial musculature at that point. Whereas if you go down into the mid face, the SMAS is pretty thick all across here and the dermis is thick as well. So these areas have the most hyaluronic acid, which means they have the most to lose. So hyaluronic acid naturally in your skin exists and it's what hydrates your skin, what keeps it kind of fluffy, not just the fat. The hyaluronic acid draws in water and without that, you'll look shriveled and dry and old and gaunt. So it's very important to have the hyaluronic acid. So um, dissolvers, uh, they come in different forms. Some of them come from like testicles. Some of them are uh, from human. There's different ones. Uh, the ones in the US that we use are usually either Vitrace or Hylinex. They're different forms of hyaluronidase. And they have a, uh, a pulse duration of about 30 minutes or so until they stop working. So. Uh, when someone's doing pulse treatments, meaning they're trying to dissolve something repeatedly during a vascular event, they would inject it, wait 30 minutes to three hours, depending on uh, how much they want it to wait, and then re-inject it again to get it to work more again. Uh, and that's the case with all of them. The units that they come in are very difficult for people to understand. So uh, I try not to even measure things in units for other doctors. I just tell them generally this is what I do. And as long as the hyaluronidase hits it, it'll work. So. Um, it's not largely dose dependent, but you do have to have enough to, to make a difference. So areas that don't cause problems when you dissolve, the most common area <clears throat> that we dissolve is the under eye and the upper lip. The under eye, when you dissolve, can deflate dramatically. You can lose a lot of water volume immediately and the eye will look like it collapsed. And if you don't prepare the patient for this, which happened to me before, uh, they'll think that something terrible happened. Even though you told them it's gonna get hollow, they think that something excessive happened because all this water that's been sitting there forever goes. Even if you dissolve this much Juvederm, there's gonna be that much water on top of it. So it really dehydrates and collapses. And they'll look severely dehydrated, gaunt and crepey in the skin for a couple of days until the body starts to rehydrate itself. Now in that area, it's unlikely you're gonna damage any or much of your own hyaluronic acid. So you can kind of go to town on it uh, with the only downside being if you hit superficial, you're going to make the skin quality worse. So you have to really try to stay deep if you can, unless you have to go superficial. <clears throat> in those cases, when I'm doing the under eye dissolving, I usually, uh, it's in the case of Juvederm or Voluma. Voluma should never be placed in the under eye. Juvederm should never be placed in the under eye. Uh, but people do it. I had a patient today who had Juvederm placed in the under eye. In um, most conferences worldwide for years now, uh, everybody's been in accordance that you don't put it in the under eye. It's not meant to go in the under eye and the hyaluronic acid fillers are very different. So nobody should think that they're all the same or react the same. So either way, I would dissolve it, have them, I tell them they're gonna get bruised because 
it weakens the vessel wall as well when you do dissolution of fillers the hyaluronidase can actually weaken the vessel wall and you bruise more easily so they typically do bruise even for a regular injection you might not so it goes down they come back about four days later re-inject if you need to four days later you check again and then you can refill if you want if you don't touch it it'll get exaggerated and then it'll rebound in hydration over the course of about two weeks uh, just in case they don't want it refilled which is fine so that's over here the area in the face that causes what i call filler dysmorphia or dissolver dysmorphia is in the mid face so body dysmorphia or facial dysmorphia is when a patient sees something wrong with themselves that nobody else sees that's called dysmorphia you have a, an altered kind of version of yourself that nobody else can see so this area over here is filled with natural hyaluronic acid filled with it dermis is thick smas is thick and those areas are what contain most of your hyaluronic. If you put dissolver in this area to get rid of a filler, you're gonna shrink your own tissue and it's gonna become deflated. Deflated is one of the worst things that can happen to you. Deflation in the mid face makes you look old, makes the nasal labial folds look harsher, it makes your skin look like it has poor quality. So I advise strongly against dissolving this area in the face unless you have to, or else your patient can end up with dissolver dysmorphia. Dissolver dysmorphia means they got dissolved and usually not once whoever's going to dissolve you here is going to do it several times because it's not going to work properly once twice three times four times multiple times usually and then they'll mix in a radio frequency to shrink things more so they develop dissolver dysmorphia which means that they look at their face and they feel like something is so different they don't look like themselves their photos all look different and they do they lost the brightness in their skin they look older they look collapsed they look like they lost 100 pounds it's a very strange look. However, doctors generally don't identify it because it's a very vague thing to happen. It's not something that you can identify like there was a dot there and there's not a dot there anymore. It's a vague change in the consistency and health of the skin, so it's very hard for doctors to see it. That disparity between what the doctor sees and what the patient sees is why we, I call it filler or dissolver dysmorphia. It's because they end up obsessed with it they can never fix it or they try to fix it for years and the doctor can't see it nor can their friends but if you show them a picture everybody sees that there's obviously something wrong in the after photo so i always advise please don't dissolve here unless there's a discrete nodule you're going after and instead if you're trying to shrink that area from prior filler try something like profound profound can shrink the skin and tighten it at the same time it'll increase the metabolism of filler because your metabolism in the face goes up when your immune system is revved up like uh, in a, from an insult like radio frequency so that's the way to avoid that problem now let's say you go and dissolve this area down in the mid face some doctors say your hyaluronic acid will come back um, i'll tell you for a fact that that is not that is an uncertain statement you cannot know if the hyaluronic acid will ever come back because I've operated on people who have had dissolver and I know the natural thickness of the smas in different areas of the face because I'm always staring at it, always cutting it, always analyzing it. And people who have had dissolver before, sometimes even four or five years later, I've gone and made incisions for a lip lift or a facelift and their smas is still thinner than it used to be. So some people never recover their hyaluronic that you dissolved. Some people do. You don't know who that's gonna be. How long is it gonna take? Some people a year, some people three years, some people 70% recovers and the rest they'll never get. So I advise doctors not to take it for granted. We dissolve because we have to and always dissolve because you have to. It's not an entirely safe thing to do, although uh, the benefits usually outweigh the risks. That's why we do it. And the upper lip, it's a very common area uh, to dissolve fillers because um, and the main culprit, as uh, everyone's heard me say a million times by now, and if you haven't gotten it, please get it, it's Juvederm. Juvederm is the devil of lip filler in this area, the devil of under eye filler. I do use Juvederm in the lip if it's a patient with scleroderma or fails all other hyaluronic acid fillers because Juvederm does have that benefit of drawing in water and lasting a little bit longer, especially on resistant lips. However, it can migrate. So let's say you inject over here, it can crawl up and go about a centimeter north. Silicone can go two, three centimeters. Juvederm goes about one centimeter. Restylane and Volur, Volbella, all the others go about two millimeters, three millimeters, something small. The other thing to know is that hyaluronic acid here, once it's there, can last about 10 years plus. So it's a mistake to think that you had one placed two years ago and it's gone. When it's placed here, it can migrate up. 
it migrates even more if a doctor injects from here down. So that's something I never understood. There are doctors who take their needle and they inject it from here down with, I'm not sure why. I think it might be because they think they'll bruise less. They might be because they think it hurts less. I, I don't know why. Either way, the vector of injection is completely wrong. Uh, you're gonna end up getting more lumps and bumps when you go that way. You're gonna end up with more super vermilion filler because you have to from the way it's injected. And you're, you're gonna get more uh, migration of filler because of direct backtracking along the needle uh, line pretty fast. So um, I don't think it's a smart idea to ever inject from up here unless you have a really, really good reason on one patient out of like a thousand that you've done. Otherwise, injections should always be done from down here, either cannula or needle. That's all technique dependent. The only thing that I'd say is uh, unanimously or often wrong is going from top down. So let's say you inject it over here. Uh, the filler can migrate north about a centimeter and it typically infiltrates into the SMAS layer, uh, which sits on top of the muscle and it draws in water. So when this happens, the lip gets thicker, you look more like a monkey, and your lip gets floppier because the muscle can't flex anymore. When muscle has water in it, it kind of splays out and it can't flex anymore. And the lip is a very sensitive muscle. As you know, it talks. And so it's the one that moves and does this and kisses. And it's a very dynamic, very sensitive muscle. You don't want to tamper with it in any way. That's why I tell people don't do threads around the lip. That's why I tell people don't do fat around this area because it can go inhibit muscle movements. You have to be super, super careful with that. So either way, it deposits itself mainly into the SMAS layer, which is the thick, cushy tissue layer that's under the dermis and above the muscle. It's in that area. Uh, all you have to do is put small amounts of dissolver. What I do is I use vitrace. I use 10 units of vitrace and a 0.3 cc syringe. So I use 10 units of vitrace and I use 20 units of lidocaine, 1%, because it buffers it. It's a painful burning sensation when you uh, put in dissolver. So 10 and 20 is usually adequate. So you have 0.3 cc's, which will dissolve this either entire half of the lip or lateral to the filtrum and 0.3 for this side. So 10 units plus 20 of lidocaine, that's your mix. Um, I have them come back four days later. We take a look at it. I tell them, listen, I might dissolve your own hyaluronic and you might end up with a little indentation or wrinkling there that you didn't have before or you didn't know it was there before because you've been expanded for so long with unnatural filler. Not a big deal. When they come back in, if they have that little red ridge of indentation right along the vermilion, which is usually where it is, you grab your needle of Restylin. Restylin is the easiest one. You can use other ones too, but Restylin is the most predictable for this. You put your needle in, and as you draw it out, you put a scant amount. And I say scant because all it needs to do is put the tiniest little micro droplets back into the SMAS, and you'll see how rapidly water comes in and hydrates it. You don't want to fill it back up. You just want a little stimulation for hydration. So that's why I use the Restylin after that, the tiniest, tiniest bit. I usually dissolve, wait about four days, check it again to see if I need to dissolve again, wait about four days and refill. You do not want to do repeat dissolution. Repeat dissolving can damage your own SMAS and your own dermis and it may never recover. You have to know that. Another area people get the dissolver dysmorphia is down over here in this area. This is also a common area to see migration where the doctor will go and they have a deepened marionette or pregial sulcus in this area and they'll try to fill it to camouflage the indentation. However, it can migrate back into this fold, and if it does, then all of a sudden this weighs down. And this can happen here on the corner of the lip, right over there where it hoods down, it's very common. So they get a bulge here above the modiolus, or it can happen here and it gets deeper. And usually uh, it's not a first time injection, it's somebody who's had injections multiple times, and they're already masculinized and looking boxy and kind of full down here and then you do one more and then it migrates up and it starts making it heavier. When you dissolve those areas, you also can end up with the filler uh, dissolver dysmorphia because it's a very sensitive area to dissolving for the same exact reasons as here is. Thick dermis, thick mass, lots of hyaluronic acid, so you'll see a bigger difference in deflation. It can also, it's an area where you see more indentations. The last reason why this is worse is because you have a very strong muscle contraction in this area from the depressor anguli oris, mentalis is here, depressor labii inferioris is here, and they pull down pretty hard. And those are strong muscles. Now let's say you're somebody who has these areas forming prematurely, it's usually because you're also using your depressors prematurely and hyperactively. So if you have 
uh, prominent teeth and you can't close your mouth so well, depressors get stronger over time. So in that person, when you go do dissolver, their muscle's already stronger. Now you've deflated it where you can see the muscle contraction under the skin and it gets even deeper. So that's something I always caution against um, dissolving this area. Again, that's something I like using profound radio frequency for. It can shrink the area instead. So those are the main areas that you're gonna be using Dissolver. The other areas in the nose or for little balls in the vermilion. I would say in the nose and in the vermilion, these are areas where you don't need to dissolve. So doctors forget that the Dissolver is a gel and sometimes it congeals. And when it congeals, it congeals into balls, into capsules uh, or just into little tiny uh, spheres. So you get little spheres of filler along the edge here. Rather than dissolving it and bruising the person really badly, why don't you just grab the same needle you injected with, which is a 27 gauge for the most part, you poke it in there and you push it and you'll see the little bead of filler come out. In the nose, in the nasal tip, that's another area that congeals uh, from too much filler. It's also pushing the nasal cartilage uh, apart, which is a bad thing. So instead of dissolving here, I, I usually go and I grab a needle, I poke it and I squeeze it out. And you can do anything up to even a 20 gauge. Uh, if you really had to, but you don't need to. Usually like a, ninth, uh, a 22 gauge is huge and that'll allow all the filler to come out. So you do it with a poke. Alternatively, I've had strips of filler that are superficial and I wanna get them gone. And I know that some fillers here can cause nodular hypertrophy, which means thickening of the mucosa. And what I do is I grab a little dissolver, I poke it into uh, the areas that have those little nodules. Even here, I could put a little dissolver in there, tiniest bit. I use that to liquefy it. Now I can put in my needle and squeeze it out, put in my needle and squeeze it out. The benefit of doing that in the nasal tip is that most patients don't want you to get rid of all the filler. So how can you control that? Dissolver is not controllable. Dissolver will go dissolve whatever it wants to dissolve. If you wanna control it, naturally just aspirate it yourself. Put in a needle, squeeze out, take a look at it, squeeze it out, take a look at it and say, you know what? I can leave the rest of the filler now. Not a big deal. The way you know that's happening in the nasal tip is usually because it looks like a ball or it becomes translucent. You put up a light to it and the whole thing glows. It glows like a bright little light bulb. Um, that means that you've congealed filler on the nasal tip. This area in the glabella is another area that's notorious for drawing in water and getting heavier over time. The worst filler for that, I mean, obviously radius you don't use in the nose. Never use radius in the nose. Uh, this is, I mean, I always say this is a joke, but unless you really hate somebody. And if you really hate somebody and you don't care about the repercussions. So you don't use radius in the nose because what if you hit a vessel? You can't get rid of that, you've blinded them. Um, otherwise, the other problem is that it can draw on water over time and calcify the area, it's not good. So out of hyaluronic acid, the worst you could put in there is Juvederm. Juvederm can draw on water and all of a sudden you get this really heavy glabella that thickens and widens over time and patients don't know they had it because it's been years, it takes years. And when things happen over years, patients don't realize it. So it's up to the doctor to feel it and see, oh my God, that's not natural. It doesn't feel like my nose. It feels doughy and thick. That's filler, that's filler accumulation. So um, that's another area where I really like to put dissolver. You're at very minimal risk dissolving in this area. Do not let it hit the rhinion. If you get over this thin skin area, all of a sudden you can kind of see through uh, to any bumps or anything that are underneath. So make sure never to hit here. This is safe, but put your finger around it and do it responsibly. So I think that's it. Never dissolve someone too much. Never tell someone you can get rid of all their filler. It's not possible. Even here when I dissolve, it gets rid of like 70%. Dissolve again, 70% of that. Dissolve again, 70% of that. Filler residue will remain. Filler residue will remain in the whole face. Once it's injected, you have it and it could be for life, even though these things are supposed to last a couple years. I think it's very rare for the body to reabsorb all of it. Little microscopic portions can always stay and they can draw in water, make your under eyes tired, do a lot of different things. So I'd never tell a patient that this stuff is temporary. I would say the effect can be temporary, can be temporary, just like threads. You don't say it's a temporary thread, um, you know, and that's like calms the patient down to think, okay, well, I don't, if I don't like it, it goes away, no. It sat there for six months. Nothing sits in your face for six months and doesn't do something. Um, it's not fully inert. So that's why if it were fully inert, the threads wouldn't get eaten back up. They get eaten back up, which means they're not inert. Your body hydrolyzes them. When it's hydrolyzing, that means it's drawing in cells to do it. And it's gonna draw in immune cells too and fibroblasts and it deposits collagen or fibrotic type of scar tissue. So hyaluronics fortunately do not really form scar tissue. They're pretty benign. 
It's a gelatinous material, but it can hypertrophy or thicken tissue or expand it over time by drawing in water. Um, staying in the mucosa, it can cause nodular changes to the point where you can't even dissolve it. You say, oh my God, I had it dissolve 20 times, it's still there. Well, it's now a nodule, it's no longer just filler. You have to cut it out. So those things happen too, but never jump to cutting it out. Never jump to you know, doing anything if you don't have to. Don't dissolve people if you don't have to. Only dissolve if you need to. And if you're gonna dissolve somebody, make sure you do it delicately and you're ready to take on the shit show that you just started because it's gonna be two weeks where they don't feel good about themselves. And if you don't know how to do it very predictably and tell them how it's gonna happen, which has happened to me, I've done it on patients and I knew exactly what I was doing and I knew exactly what was gonna happen, but I'm not the most eloquent person sometimes. I come in the room, I kinda of like, okay, I'll fix this. I'm a, I'm a mechanic, I'll go boom, boom, boom. I do the injections, I'll see you in four days, I'll take care of it, don't stress. They come back crying because I didn't explain it well enough and it's completely my fault. I've learned since then, I don't do that anymore. Now, I'm very, very clear about what's gonna happen and I tell patients over and over again, I hate doing this on people. If I'm doing this to you, it's because you want me to. Please don't ruin my life after I inject you. It's, this is the exact thing that's gonna happen. And so you really wanna dissolve uh, candidates that are ready emotionally to go through it, candidates that have the time to go through it because they'll bruise, they'll hollow, they'll sink, skin gets crepey, it's dehydrated, it takes a while to come back. You can fix most of it, but um, it's, a, it's a process. So uh, all that means is don't take it for granted. Dissolver, although it's a lovely thing, is uh, by no means risk-free. By no means is dissolver risk-free. So um, if you have patients that need to be dissolved, feel free not to send them to me. You can send them uh, to plenty of other people. I do deal with like the worst cases when nobody else can take care of it. But Jen, my nurse practitioner, loves doing that stuff now. Um, it's a bit of an emotional toll sometimes. Although patients, once we do it, the people who love it the most, it's for the under eyes and the lip. Those are pretty straightforward areas. Their parents love me. Their parents come back like, oh my God, you gave me my kid back. Oh my God, she looks like she used to. Uh, or I don't look tired anymore. Uh, so it's, there's huge benefits to it. And patients are very confused sometimes with under eye filler because they have no wrinkles since it's all blown up. And they think, okay, well, wrinkles, hollowing, it's the same thing. They're very different. Um, it's another, you know, fillers in the under eye are just one more thing that can give you bogginess and a tired appearance under the eye. Although it's not hollowing anymore, it's a different tired appearance. It's bogginess, uh, water, it looks allergic, it looks blue, it's nasty. So either way, uh, if you have any questions, you can always ask me about this stuff. Um, I will try to do some videos maybe on Dissolver. It's not that exciting, but happy to uh, and hope everybody is loving the sane world we live in today.